Now to some other stories uh, this evening, I'll go to the Ashanti region where some boys diagnosed with HIV are battling with the psychosocial effects of swollen breasts, the side effect of antiretroviral drugs. Now, health officials say the condition is irreversible, though can be corrected through a surgical procedure to remove the breast tissue. To weather very disturbing development, but I've been joined in studio by uh, the uh, head of the adolescent clinic at the Confanochi Teaching Hospital in Kumasi, Dr. Anthony Enemil. Doc, it's good to have you. Good evening to you. Yeah, good evening. Thank Anthony. you very much for joining us this evening. Now, how, how widespread is this particular situation amongst uh, these boys where they develop breasts as a result of uh, the admission of antiretrovirals? Relatively, well, good evening to your viewers and good evening, Alfred. Relatively, there are very few adults who would have such complications. Out of the over 200 adolescents who are in care at my clinic, we have about seven of them whom we've documented to have this condition, medically called gynecomastia, which is breast enlargement. So the numbers are not big, but for those who are affected, it is significant for them because it comes with a lot of stigma. Boys who are already fighting HIV, that itself is a level of stigma. But mm -hmm. added to that, when their breasts are enlarging, it makes it more complicated. Is it, is it really just as a result of the use or the admission of the antiretrovirals that causes their breast to enlarge? The condition is a known side effect of the drugs. It's well documented worldwide. So it doesn't happen to everyone, but there are very few who would have the condition. Unfortunately, even when you take them off the drug, it doesn't reverse unless you do surgery. And because they are men and will not be using their breasts, once we remove the tissues, it will not recur. I see, it will not recur. No, even, even, even when they return to the admission of the antiretrovirals, because they're going to be on it for life, yes. right? So yes. if the major cause of this breast enlargement or the, the enlargement of the tissues of the breast of the man is because of the admission of the antiretrovirals. And I'm just applying common sense. Yes, so, so if they go through the surgery, you take it off, and yes. they go back to the drugs, what's going to happen? We, we don't need to stop the drugs because that is what is giving them life. Without the drugs, they would have died. And the problem is if, they, if we don't correct it, and because of that, they stop the drugs, then they, they are likely to die because their viral loads are going to get high and they are going to get opportunistic infections. But the tissues, you know, the men do not have big breasts. Okay. So the, all the tissues are removed. So there is nothing for the drugs to act on mm. to get enlarged again. I see. And what, what age bracket are we looking at? Um, th those seven that you have recorded out of the 200 who have developed this particular Yeah, situation. they are all in their late adolescence. So ranging from 16 to 19 years. 16 to 19, 19 years. Yeah. And, and so it doesn't, it's the probability of it occurring in adults, it's, it's low. Usually. Yes, I really don't know the incidence in adults because I deal with children and adolescents. Mm -hmm. But at least I'm talking for those in my clinic. And right. there, there are seven of them who we have documented have the condition. And it is not specific to a particular drug. And they are on combination of three drugs. So it's very difficult to tell which of them is giving them the condition, except that we know it's a documented side effect. It's unfortunate seven of them have, because we have more than probably 90 plus boys in the clinic, but just seven of them would have the, con have the condition. See. Because you, you, you said early on that this is a, a double stigma situation yeah. because they're already living with the HIV yes. virus and then now they're developing a setting, for lack of a better expression, breast enlargement, breast enlargement which is abnormal, yes. right, for a man or a boy exactly. to have very enlarged breasts sure. like a woman. What's, what's the cost of this surgery that can correct this situation? Yeah, currently we are I'm in discussion with a surgeon who has shown interest in helping them. We are putting together figures to know the cost of, because they will go through anesthesia mm -hmm. and all that. So we are currently working on that. Hopefully we'll approach hospital management if they can give support to them. These are children who we have records of how they got the infection. They had it from their mothers when there was no intervention. Some 15 years ago, we didn't have the intervention that would prevent mother to child transmission. So we, need, we all need to do something to support them. So we are working on that. And hopefully it can be done. And I know they are going to get over that stigma. But for the HIV, it is for life. Mm -hmm. And the only way they can stay healthy 
marry without transmitting yeah. and actually infecting their children is to be on medication. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there are side effects, but we've been managing it since they, they got to that age. Okay, well, let's look at the prevalence rate generally and finally um, of, of the situation um, across the country. Yeah. I mean, generally, the numbers are reasonable. I mean, Ghana is one of the low prevalent mm. states in Africa. We are, we are doing about 1.8% compared to South Africa, which is in the 20s. So we are having a total number of roughly, when I checked with national, 20,000 to about 22,000, 25,000 children, including adolescents, are living with HIV nationwide. 20 and that to 25,000. Yes. And that is actually for those we know their status. The difficulty is those walking around know. who we do not know and that is even riskier riskier in the sense that as we speak no child or no adult should die of hiv Absolutely. there's medication and if you have medication you live your life and if there are no other conditions to take you off you should live your normal life and move on i mean it's like somebody with hypertension diabetes mm -hmm. but the problem is people are not testing and we are not getting those we need to put them on treatment the mm -hmm. paradigm has changed now, HIV shouldn't be stigmatized. You can go to work, you can take your medication, you live your normal life. But, but, but I'm sure you've been involved in the public education a lot more. What, yes. what exactly still keeps people away from going to voluntarily test that whether you, 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 are, you have HIV or not? Because I can say there's a lot of people watching who still would rather prefer not knowing yeah. their status than yeah. go, going into an HIV. What is that? Around yeah, that, I think that, that we all need to work on tradition. I think traditionally, when the disease was discovered in 1986 in Ghana, it was called the disease of death because there was even no medication. Mm. And people have gotten used to the fact that when you have HIV, it's a death sentence. When you have HIV, you will transmit it. But HIV has far advanced. There's so much going on. And we all need to, like you are doing, mm -hmm. it's a very good effort, and I commend your station for that. HIV is no longer a disease that should be stigmatized because again as i said there's mm. medication and medications okay. are for free yes there are side effects like we are discussing but then overall their life expectancy is increasing i have up to 26 year old in our clinic who started as a teenager and he's been on medication doing well going about his business but let's not forget that these children are in our schools mm. they are everywhere they are doing very well but so long as they're on their medication, there is hope. And the good thing is they can marry, and if they're on medication, they're not going to give the disease to their spouses, and their children, children are, no, well. are not going to be infected. And it is just like somebody with diabetes, with mm -hmm. hypertension. Once you take your medication, you will live for long. But everybody mm -hmm. must know your status. So We must all know, know our, our status. status. I mean, we are coming up with Know Your Status right. campaign. And eventually, you know, mm -hmm. WHO is targeting 1990, 90% 90, 90 of population should know their status. 90% should be on medication. <laughs> and 90% should be suppressed by another. Dr. Anamel, thank you. <laughs> I hope that the viewers will have the courage to go and um, <laughs> check their status. But before I wrap mm -hmm. up, let me just uh, go back to, to that early story where just to let you know how the boys who are diagnosed with HIV uh, and battling with psychosocial effects of swollen breasts, the side effects of the use of or the administration of the antiretroviral drugs. Health officials say the condition is irreversible, though it can be corrected through surgical procedure. The condition known as gynecomestia is a medical condition characterized by the swelling of the breast tissue. It is a frequent side effect of antiretroviral therapy. Health professionals at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital say some boys have already reported to the hospital with the condition. Kofi, one of them, feels embarrassed about his swollen breast. The right side started developing when I was in Form 1. When I was in Form 1, but when getting to Form 3, the right, the left side also started. But that one, the way it came, it was rapidly more than the left side. I used to bath in, like, a bath house which was closed, not the general one. I used to bath there, like, and that, that place, there was no light there. There was no light there, and I used to wake up early before even rising bell so that I can take my bath and hurry up and dress up before I go to class. 
a pediatric specialist and head of the Adolescents HIV Clinic at a Confanochi Teaching Hospital, Dr. Anthony Enemil, indicates that gynecomastia is the side effect of the antiretroviral drugs but can be corrected through surgery. The, the, the tissue would have to be removed and uh, surgically sutures such that it doesn't show because we can't take them off the drugs and if they're on the drugs and they are developing it and it's really visible, the only way forward is surgery. But till then, I think they have a lot of psychosocial challenges. I mean, a lot of these young boys have got into senior high school and they are in boarding schools. So the biggest challenge for them is they can't expose their chest. You know men in boarding house. The slightest agitation, everybody wants to remove the chest, the, the shirts and the singlets. But they cannot do that because then it will call for a lot of stigmatization. It's a real concern there. And Doc, we want to thank you so much for making time to join us. So everybody has to know their status. Know your status. That's the message you're living with us. Thank you so much, sir. And you have a good evening. Grateful. Dr. Anthony Enemel is the head of the Adolescent HIV Clinic at the Confonochi Teaching Hospital. Joining us tonight. Now, the Member of Parliament for Akachi South constituency, Bernard Ahiafo, has called for investigations into the allegations that non-law lecturers marked exam papers of law students, which saw some massive failures. He spoke to TV3 in an